Not by your own ability, but by the Spirit. The Spirit that He has given us. The Spirit of the Son. Whereby we cry, Father, Dad, my Dad, my Father, which is, our, which is in heaven. My Father. <laughs> whereby we cry, Father, oh, Father. By the Spirit that He has given us. It goes so beyond what a mind can comprehend. How He's cleansed us and He has made us holy and pure enough to come by the blood of Jesus Christ and stand before the holy creator of all things. Oh, Jesus. We thank you for your blood that's cleansed us and washed us and purified us and set us up in these heavenly places. That we could come in and we could bring this offering and praise before you, Father. Oh, Lord, let it not be in one of us a meager offering or a tired offering or a lame offering, Father. But let it be the offering, Father, that you deserve an offering with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our being, with everything that was in us, oh God. Oh, Father, that we will not be just partly aware of your presence, oh God, that we will give ourselves to be completely aware of this awesome glory that you have given unto us, oh God. Let us not be careless, oh God, with this great and precious gift that you have given us. Father, that we would do anything outside of your glory, outside of the realms of your presence, oh God. Oh, Father, but let us count, oh God, these things that you have done for us is so dear and so precious. So dear and so precious, oh God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we love you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we want to give you all the praise and the glory that is due your name, Father. We don't want the rocks crying out in our place, Father, because we were not willing to open our mouth and praise the Almighty. Oh, Father God. Father, we stand right now before the holies of holies and we worship you. We worship you, almighty God. We worship you, Father. By your precious Holy Spirit. In spirit and in truth, we worship you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. The name above all names. We worship you, almighty God. We worship you. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, Jesus, Jesus. We get lost in your presence, Lord. <laughs> we get lost in your presence when we're dancing around your throne. <laughs> we're worshiping. We're worshiping you. We're worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the ancient of days. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Yes, so So Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it doesn't matter if you can sing or you can't sing or if you have a, low, low, uh, a, a, a quiet voice or a loud voice. It's all about just getting caught up in the realms of the Spirit and worshiping Him, praising Him. Because if you will come into this place and realize that you're standing before the holies of holies, that where two or three are gathered in His name, He is here in the midst. Do, do, do we realize, do we realize the awesome presence of the Almighty that is in this place, that lives in us, that dwells in us? The angels, the host of heaven, we all brought them with us. And we're in this place together in the unity of the Spirit to 
touching the realms of heaven and the realms of his glory. And in here, we are strengthened together as a body <laughs> to live out this glorious life that he has given us. To live it out, to shine bright. The strength of coming together, the covenant, the commandment that he gave us. The commandment that he gave us to come together even more as you see the day is approaching. How many feel like you see the day approaching of Jesus? How many, how many read your Bible and know that prophecy is being fulfilled at rapid pace? And the coming of the Lord is closer than ever before. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is coming for his church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And the covenant is to come together even the more. As you see, the day approaches. Why? Because there's that unity and that strength of standing together. That's why Jesus didn't send out one by, his, by themselves. He sent them always in two. And he brought them back together. And he said to come together and to create a body and to create a sanctuary, to create a place everywhere you go. As you preach the gospel. And baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That they, you create a body of saints together to stand together in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. To, to be a strength as in that unity we come up before the presence of God. There is power in unity. There is authority in unity. In that unity of His Spirit and in His presence. And it only has to be two and He shows up. Two or three and He is there. And we got more than two or three, amen? And he is here. Oh, praise you, Jesus. And in that unity of that communion that he commanded us to have, he said, even the more as the day approaches. And how many know how many times a day they were coming together at that time? Two times a day for prayer. And he says, even the more as the day approaches. That strength and that unity of the body is imperative for his church if we want to be the light that God has called us to be. If we want to be his ambassadors upon the earth that he has called us, commissioned us, and ordained. Every one of us, not just some of us, not the one that's holding the microphone up front or the people that are just singing that give themselves to worship and, and come in here to bring everybody together and worship. Not just a few here or there, the evangelists that go out, the missionaries or whatever, but all of us. He's called and ordained every one of us to come in and to walk in this fellowship and walk in this covenant and to go out and be the light of his glorious gospel everywhere we are, no matter what our vocation is. He's called us to this glorious gospel. He's called every one of us to be the light of this glorious gospel. He's called every one of us to fulfill what he has called the body, the church to do. And what did he say that we would do? He said, I go to the Father and I send the Holy Spirit. And when you are endued with power from on high, you will be witnesses. That's the church. That is the beginning, the ordination of the church. That time when the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. That was the time that he called his church together. And that's the purpose and the plan of the church is to be filled up as that day. Nothing changing, nothing wavering from that place and that anointing that he placed upon his church full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Because what did they do? He said, he said first, he said, wait for the promise of the Father. He didn't say immediately go. He said, you go and you wait for the promise of the Father. And when he set up his church in Acts chapter 2, the way he wanted it run he does not want us to any time, any day. I don't care if it's 2,000 years later and things have changed in the world. We are not of the world. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He is a holy God. He is a righteous God. He is a consuming fire. 
And the fire is good for those that will allow themselves to be caught up in the realms of his glory. But the fire is not so good for those that he will bring judgment upon. Because they do not choose. They do not choose to walk in this glory that he has purposed his church to walk in. There's no battle that is too hard for the Almighty. When you're walking full of the Holy Ghost and fire like he established on the day of Pentecost, when you are giving yourself to live in this realm of glory, you don't have to worry about sin because you're caught up in the light. You're caught up in the light of his glory. But his church gives themselves to what do, what do we give him ourselves to? Do we give ourselves to this realm, this realm of the Holy Spirit that he established his church in in Acts chapter 2? That saying glory, it wasn't, it wasn't for one time, one day. It was for the church to be established, to live in, to dwell in, to walk in, to continue in, to continually be filled in, to continually be caught up in this realm of glory and never come down. What do we give ourselves to? Work? Our jobs? Do we give more to our job than we do to Jesus? Is our job more important to us than Jesus? Do we, do we give more of our time to our vocation than Jesus? Do we give more time to bodily exercise than we do Jesus? Some of us need to give a little bit more time to bodily exercise. But I tell you what, if you get caught up in the realms of his glory... He'll deal with it all. He'll take care of it all. Oh, hallelujah. But do we give ourselves more time to entertainment than we do to the realms of his presence and the realms of his glory? Do you know that we can do our job? We can do our exercise. We can have some entertainment all caught up in the realms of his glory and then it's all good. All filled up with the fire of the Holy Ghost going about everywhere we go. He didn't tell us. He didn't tell us to hide ourselves from the world. He said to be the light of the world, a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. He said, don't put it under a bushel and hide it. He said, set it up on a candlestick and let that light, let that light of his glory be seen in this earth. But what is the light? The glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ manifested in us by the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost and fire. If you give yourself to the Holy Spirit, sin will not have dominion over you for you are not under the law. You are not under a letter that you have to do by your own ability, but you are turned over to a spirit realm to walk after the spirit. If you'll give yourself to the spirit and the light of the glory grows brighter and brighter in you each day and you cannot have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. All you can do is reprove them just by you showing up in the room. Just by you showing up because you carry such a light of the glory of the gospel. This is what Jesus died for. This is what he paid such an ultimate price for. It's for his church to come and live out this glory. To come and live out this glory. This glorious gospel of the dear son. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. We cannot do it of ourselves. Just like Jesus did not offer himself up by his own ability. He did nothing of himself. He only did what he saw the Father do. And he only spoke what he saw, heard the Father say. And he offered himself up through the Spirit. If you don't know, I'm not turning to the Scriptures, but I'm quoting Scripture after Scripture. If you're new here then you, know, you can go home and you can jot them down, go home and look them up because it's all the Word of God that I'm speaking. He offered himself up through the Spirit. Will you offer your life up through the Spirit right now? And that's just simply allowing the Holy Spirit to take over your life, to rule and reign, to rule and reign over your life, to rule and reign, to be the ruler of your soul, to be King of kings and Lord of lords of your life. And through him, he's got great, exciting things for us to live out. His ambassadors before this earth, 
the light shining in a dark place, the light of the world shining through us. You know, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal, everlasting life. And God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but he sent his son because he wanted to bring the light of life to us. And the sad part about it is men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But you know the good news in the middle of that? The good news in the middle of that deception that the enemy would hold over you is you can be broken free. All you have to do is say, help me, Jesus. I know that you are the eternal creator of all things. Lord, I, I, I surrender it up to you. Oh, God, bring me over into this glorious light. You do not have to be left stuck with any stain of darkness upon you. Because in him is no darkness. And if he is in you and we are in him, as Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, if, if, if he is in us, as Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in Jesus, and Jesus said, Father, that they may be in us as we are in them, if that is your life, if that's what you give yourself to, Immediately, and that's so amazing thing, immediately he brings the change of the glory of the light and then he teaches us how to walk it out by the Spirit if we'll just give ourselves to the precious Holy Spirit to walk it out. You don't have to be stuck. You don't have to be deceived by the world. You can let the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shine bright in you and him lead you to the Father. The Holy Spirit will only show you the Father. And if you're following the Holy Spirit, that's all you're going to see is the glory of righteousness, truth, and holiness. Oh, praise you, Father. Is it dear to us? Is this glorious salvation, this is the salvation that he brought to us to redeem us out of darkness. He completely destroyed the work of the devil. He destroyed it. He destroyed the work of the devil. So if you're in Christ Jesus, the powers of darkness have no power over you. It's just allowing Christ to reign and rule in us. It's allowing that. And then there's that fellowship. He brought us back to him for fellowship and communion and relationship that we walk and we live out our life like him, that we walk in the light as he is in the light and we have no fellowship with the works of darkness, but we walk with him in this glorious light, this glorious salvation. And then he empowers us to do what he did. Is that amazing? This is what he's called his church to. He said, he said, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. Greater works than what Jesus did. We can look at the miracles of Jesus. Some say, you know, it was 37 miracles Jesus did. No, 38, 39. Jesus on the campaigns that he did and the ministry times that he did, he healed all all that came to them. How many was out there one time when he, when he fed the 5,000 men, not including the women and the children? I mean, we don't know. It could have been 15, 20,000 people. It could have been more than that at just that one time. And he healed all, all that came to him, not including the miracle of the five loaves and fishes that he broke and it fed all that many people. But he showed forth his glory continually. And I like what John says at the end of, of John. He says, if all that Jesus had done were written down in a book, I would think that not even the world could contain all the things that Jesus did in the time of the three years of ministry. Oh, God. Oh, God, if we, each one, he said greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father, and when I go to my Father, I pour out the Holy Ghost on the church, and I establish the church, and I enable the church to walk out and to live out just what Jesus did.
And then if we go and we do what Jesus did and greater works, because we are multiplied just in that factor, it's greater works because we're multiplied. And we do what Jesus did. If we at least do what Jesus did, all the books could not contain. And oh, what glory, oh, what glory to walk out and live this life that Jesus Christ lived. And what do we trade it for? A miserable, stinking little job that we're not satisfied with? And living in a cute little house and having a little bit of money to go to the donut shop and do this and that and the other and buy our little trinkets and, and do whatever we want to do. And we're just caught up in this little meager, 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 meager life. And we lose sight of the glory. We lose sight of the glory and the fellowship that he's called each and every one of us to. Not some of us, every one of us. He said the body, I've given to you gifts as the Holy Spirit desires. It's the same spirit that works in every one of us, dividing to get gifts to each member of the body to function. Everyone has been given a gift. Is it dear to you? Is that gift dear to you this morning? Has that gift been dear to you all week? Are you allowing that gift to function in you and through you? Are you allowing yourself to be the light of the gospel? Do you realize the people that you are around, that, that, that at this, this time, this moment, where you're around, don't look for a brighter day someday. If we're faithful with a few things, God will make us ruler with me, uh, over many. Right now, we need to be faithful where we're at, and we need to look at the harvest that's around us. Do you realize that you are and can be the only light of the gospel that they will ever see. The people that you are around, that see you on a daily basis, you can be, you may be the only light that they will ever see. How bright is that light? How bright is that light? How bright is that light? Is that light shining forth brightly? Is the light of the world shining through you? Are you a city set upon a hill? Is the glory seen when you come into the room? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the works of God manifested in you? We look at Peter. We can look at Peter and where he was before he was baptized. He had walked with Jesus for three years. He saw the glory of heaven manifested. Jesus took him into the prayer meetings. He took him into the prayer meeting. He took him and James and John. And then he stood there and was transfigured before them. And he shined as bright as the light that anyone could ever imagine. It would be like almost looking into the sun, but yet not be blinded because, well, it, it would be brighter than the sun. He's brighter than the sun. But it's looking into such a glory realm that, and, and, it, and it doesn't blind you. And Peter saw it, and he, he saw this light. He saw Jesus transfigured right there before him. And he saw Elijah and Moses talking. And they were talking about, they were talking about the crucifixion. They were talking about how it was all going to happen. Peter stood there, and he saw that. He partook of all that Jesus did. He went and he laid his hands on the sick. Peter himself, Jesus sent him forth two by two, all the disciples. And then he sent 70 others and they partook and they said, the devils are subject unto us. They came back rejoicing. And Jesus said, don't rejoice over this, but rejoice that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. <laughs> that is our greatest rejoicing. You know, and when our name is written down in the Lamb's book of life, we want to live out our life like the Lamb. And we want to let that lamb and that light shine through us. And so here, this Peter that saw all this glory, when Jesus fulfills what he came into this earth to do, Peter couldn't even hold up and said, yeah, I'm one of him. Kill me too if that's what it takes, you know. He said, no, I don't know him. I don't, I know, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him. I don't think anybody in this room has ever partaken of the glory in that realm that Peter saw it. Seeing Jesus, the Almighty God, stand right before him and be transfigured up into the, the realms of his spirit. And Peter said, 
I never saw the man. I don't know him. And he began to curse Jesus. Ah. <sighs> you think how? How is that possible? But on the day of Pentecost, but on the day of Pentecost, this is why Jesus said, go and wait for that promise. Go and wait for the promise. We have to live in the promise. We can't have an experience of the promise one time and think that that is going to carry us through. We must live in the promise. When the battle gets tough and the, 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 the seas are, are, are roaring and it seems like the circumstances of life are, are coming and, and, and overflowing us and, and we get busy in the things that we think that we have to do. If we allow that light to be shining through us in, this dark, in the dark world, then we'll be like Peter was after he, after he was baptized in the Holy Ghost because he was a different man. He stood in front of them and he declared the name of Jesus. He got up and he preached one of the most radical sermons right in the face. They had been hiding in the room until that day. They'd been hiding out. They were nervous. They were scared. But when the day of Pentecost was fully come, when the Holy Ghost came upon them and show, shone brightly upon them and tongues of fire set upon everyone in their, hand, their heads and they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. That day, those men and those women were changed to never live or walk out their own life in this world ever again. But to share the glory and there was great and much persecution with sharing that glory. But the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit, many of them offered themselves up. We see Stephen, who was chosen to be one of those to take care of the widows and the orphans. And with great signs and wonders and miracles, he declared the glory of God. And he, was, he offered himself up through the Spirit because as he's dying, what glory when you're dying that the heavens are open and you see, you see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father. That's the kind of death you want to have. You don't want to have a death that there's a, a question in your mind, but you want to have a Holy Ghost death where he's calling you home. He's saying it's time to go home. But you see the difference. You see the difference. See, Jesus said it's expedient for you that I go because if I do not go, The promise won't be sent. It's expedient for you. I have to get there so the Holy Ghost can be poured out. The, the blood cleansed the temple. The blood cleansed the temple. And not the blood of bulls and goats anymore that had to be offered up year by year. But the blood of Jesus Christ that claimed and cleansed this temple. How many temples of the Holy Ghost do we have in this place? The blood cleansed the temple. The blood cleansed the temple so the Holy Ghost could come and fill the temple. And now we are the temple of the living God. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Do we live like the temple of the Holy Ghost? He said, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and I will receive you. The Holy Ghost isn't going to go and join himself to this world and to this life. The Holy Ghost is going to reveal Father. He's going to reveal the Son. He's going to reveal the realms of heaven. And he's going to call us up to a higher place to live in glory and victory and righteousness and truth. And shine bright into a dark world. Shine. Let his light shine through us. His glorious light shine. And this is what the Father is saying. Let my light shine through you. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. Let my light shine through you. Let the light of the glory of the Father and Jesus the Son shine in you. And it only comes out of relationship and fellowship with him. You cannot walk in this life and not have that fellowship and that communion and that relationship and be that bright light. You have to realize what Christ has done in us. This hope, this glory. This transformation. Old things are passed away. They're gone. They're over. They're done. It's passed away. It is over. It is done. Behold, all things are new. All things are now in the realms of heaven, in the realms of his glory. To live out our life in the glorious, righteous, holy 
place with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ the righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I'm just going to go over, I believe the Holy Spirit is leading me over into Romans. And then give you a moment to sit down. But you're always welcome to sit down, stand up, run around. If God touches you in the glory, you guys shouldn't go anywhere yet. You're going to be coming right back. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, they couldn't contain on the day of Pentecost. They could not contain the noise that 120 people made shook the entire city. They got lost up in the realms of his glory. They got filled up with the Holy Ghost. We need a fresh baptism of the fire of the Holy Ghost every day. Every day, but especially when we come together in this place. I'm in expectation. Are you in expectation of the glory of God to come and fill the place? Are you in expectation? I'm in expectation. You know, when we live, when we live in this glory and in this expectation, we're going to be about the Father's business doing what he's doing. I was listening to a tape of Pastor Mark. I don't know. Somehow it showed up on my phone. I have no idea how it showed up in my, on my phone. But I just pressed play. I mean, I accidentally pressed play. And I, he started preaching. It was in 2008. And I'm like, that sounds like a couple of Sundays ago. <laughs> and I was like, Lord Jesus, are we hearing what you're saying to us? Are we looking at a man? Are we allowing ourselves to change and be conformed to your image? Or have some of us grown weary and just said, well, you know, I've been here for, for you know, there's some people been in the place for nearly 20 years. Are we growing in what God's telling us? Is he having to tell us over and over again, do you know God loves us that much that he will? He loves us that much that he will. But you know what's going to make heaven dance? It's when we get up and we live it out when we walk it out, when we realize that this life and this earth and the things that Satan would try to spew out of us cannot have any hold on us. When the enemy brings discouragement, you should not allow it to have any hold on you. Discouragement is one of the biggest things that takes down God's people. Because somehow, somehow I find that God's people listen to what the enemy spews out against them more than they listen to what the Almighty God has done. You know what? Because the enemy's so stinking forceful. But you know what? The angel of the Lord stands beside you continually. He's right there. Reach out and just realize that you could touch him. He might be moving around or something, or your hand could be going through him. But the angel of the Lord stands right there with you. Some people get to see the angel of the Lord come and minister with them and come and do and show them things to do. Well, whether I see it or not, I have a greater testimony right here. Greater than any angel that would appear to me because Satan himself can appear as an angel of light. I have all the testimony right here of what he has already done for me, through me, in me. And living it out is the glory. And I just was like, Lord Jesus, 2008, five years ago? And are we walking it out? Is the light of this glorious gospel being seen in us like never before? Are we that church that's living out, every one of us? Or are we, are, are we stuck in living out our own life? And we know how young we can be. And full of the Holy Ghost because we have the example of John baptized in the Holy Ghost six, at the uh, six-month uh, part of the uh, pregnancy. He's in Elizabeth's womb. And as the salutation of Mary came, as, as she came and spoke, the babe leaped in Elizabeth's room and was filled with the Holy Ghost. So how young can a child be baptized in the Holy Ghost? How young can our spirit hook up with the realm of the Holy Spirit? we got to realize that. It is our spirit connecting with the Spirit of God because that spirit was dead. 
It was dead until the blood of Jesus Christ come and cleansed us from all sins. And then the spirit is made alive. And until that time, there is no life in a spirit. There is no spirit that is functioning in a man until he knows Jesus Christ. And the spirit is what makes this word alive and living on the inside of us. Outside of the spirit, it's not living and alive. So we know that we can hook up in this realm of glory as soon as the spirit is in us. And then we know that the spirit of man is in the womb. And so it's murder to take that fruit of the womb. But anyway, you know, and I saw a little girl. Somebody posted it on Facebook, and I happened to look on Facebook, and there it was. And I, and I pressed play, and she's standing, she's standing in, in a service, and they're worshiping. And the little girl is like two years old. She could have been younger. And that little girl was dancing all across that auditorium, quite a bit of a, a, a place there, dancing by the Holy Ghost. And I mean, people were like taking video and laughing and oh, so cute. And I'm like, that's the Holy Ghost. If you weren't so stuck up in your head, you'd be just about to explode to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in that little two-year-old child that's caught up in the realm of glory. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I thank you for parents that put their children under the anointing so they can get caught up in that realm of the Holy Spirit. That little girl worshiped, and she came up. She came up in front of people, and she started, like, doing things, you know, like, she started, like, throwing her little arm like this in front of people, and she went from person to person. And I'm like, that's the anointing, man. If they could just realize. God's people are just like, checked out. And they don't realize the sacredness and the, the, the glorious realm of his presence. We just like come in and almost do our duty so many times. We need to walk out of, of the presence of the Lord when we come together, the saints of God, and his glory comes as we in unity go up into the realms of his glory. We need to walk out of this place changed and never go back to being the same. There needs to be a change. We need to be caught up in the realms of his glory. We need to forget about what it's going to look like, but we need to just say, Jesus, touch me. Touch me with the realms of your glory. Touch me with the realms of your presence. Lord Jesus, I don't want to be the same. I'm sick of the way that I've done it on my own, that I keep going after the letter of the law and trying to do it by my own ability. Father, I want to just get caught up in the realms of your spirit and live it out as a spirit man. There's so many distractions that try to come in and divide us from that realm of his glory and the realms of his spirit. And God is saying continually, come on over, come on over in his patience and his goodness and his love. And then we choose. We choose some strife or debate or we choose speaking evil towards someone or we choose. And Father's like, I'm not hanging out with that. the Holy Spirit. He, he, he shows the righteous the holiness, the purity, the glory. The light of the Almighty. There is no darkness in him. There is no darkness in him. We are the temple. We are the temple of the Most High God. In us, we should never allow any of those things to come out of a holy vessel. It's very simple. When something comes against you, when someone does evil towards you, when somebody says something bad about you, when somebody hurts you, somebody wounds you, humility. Humility. Humility brings forth honor. You must have humility before honor. In other words, you must walk in humility before God can honor you with the, the glory realm of heaven. If you feel like you're walking, you're, you're not getting, you're not touching that glory realm of heaven like you want to, are you, are you bowing low? So when someone comes and slaps you upon the face, you're blessing them and not cursing them. Where there's love flowing out of you so much that you're like Jesus when he's on the cross. You're like Peter. I mean, you're like Stephen when he's being stoned. Father, 
forgive them. And it wasn't like a religious little ditty. Because when you're getting stoned with stones, that isn't pretty. When you're being crucified, that's not fun. I mean, you get upset because somebody called you a bad name. And you go into self-defense. And you get mad at them and hatred begins to arise in your heart. My God, these things are not of his holy realm. These things are not of him. And Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And can't we just love them and bless them back, just simply? Nobody, nobody, nobody here is resisted unto blood. You tell me anybody here that, is stro- that has been striving against sin to the place that it's cost you your blood, your blood is dripped out. Not even close to the cross, not even close to what Stephen did, not even close to what Peter being uh, crucified upside down, not even close to Paul having his head chopped off and the stonings and the beatings that he took prior to that. None of us, not one of us, but the day's approaching. And literally because the church is not being the church and shining bright, that is being allowed to trample down America like it is. You know, just this many people in church, in this church right now, because it only took 120 to change the world, right? It only took 120 coming out of that upper room for the glory of God to be manifested in that. We stand here and we are speaking of the glorious realm of heaven because we were touched by one of the 120 that was up in that room. Or maybe we were touched by many of the 120 that was up in that room. But if this many people right here would let the light of the glorious gospel shine bright in them, we can very much well change the city. We very much well can change this county. We very much well can change this state. We very much well can change this nation. If we will not just be hearers and go home and have our spaghetti and forget about it all, or whatever you have on cooking, your roast, or whatever's going on, whatever your mind is occupied with. If our, if our mind will become occupied with the things of heaven through the Spirit from this point on, we can change our nation and the nations of the world. you got to show up and go to the, uh, evangel, evangelize with us if um, you don't have any other place to evangelize with. If you want to change the world, if you want to change the nation, if you want to start here, somebody's got to come and show up. we got a whole big group wanting to go to the elderly home. We haven't got that started yet, but we've got a group wanting to go. And I'm like, why did the biggest group want to go to the elderly home? Do they feel like they don't talk back? I'm just saying stuff. But anyway, everybody on the elderly group team can also come on Saturdays when we have evangelism. And and we we can walk it out with you. And show you how to touch and change somebody's life. Because this is what we're called to. We're called to be the light. But of course, we have to wait in that upper room experience until we we have that. Until we know that we've been changed by the Holy Ghost and we're living there. And then we've got to stay there. We must stay there. We must stay in that realm of glory. It must fill our homes. I pray, Lord Jesus, I want such a convicting, convincing power of the Holy Ghost that will convict people of their sins to be so dominant, such a presence of your spirit in my home that if people walk into my home or they just even come around or near my home or for, and I even pray for a mile radius around my home that people will be convicted of their sins, oh God, because I'm on my face crying out to you, Jesus. And I pray that for this church. I'm continually praying, oh God, we'll start with a mile radius and go to a 10-mile radius, oh God, that the glory of God in this place as we come together in unity of the Spirit, when we come together with our focus on, our focus on pushing in over into the realms of glory and seeing heaven and beholding the glorious things of heaven, Lord Jesus, that your light will shine so bright that conviction will fall on this entire region around us, oh God. And people will be coming, running to the place. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They came running. They heard the noise. They heard the glory of heaven show show up, and they came running. And on the first day, 3,000 people came to Jesus. Many walked away, but 3,000 said, this is God. And then the next time they have a a meeting, 
And the glory of God shows up 5,000. The next revival, the very next one, 5,000. And I'll tell you, that's the ones that are recorded. But it continued on and on until God multiplied. And he added unto them daily, daily, not just sometimes, but they had the reality of what their life was for. We want the reality today in 2015 as we see the coming of the Lord approaching nearer and nearer, nearer. We want the reality of what our life is for. And we want to live for the King of Kings. Because when we stand before him, we don't want to stand empty. And we definitely don't want to be that man with the one talent that held on to it and did nothing with it, that did nothing with this gift, this glory that Father has given every one of us. We don't want to be the one that held on to the talent. And he says, give it to me, you unfaithful servant. And he gives it to the one that has ten talents. And he says, depart from me. You say, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. He had asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior, and he had, he, you, wait a minute, hold up. There was no fruit manifested in that relationship, it was not a covenant relationship. It was a fear. The fearful and the unbelieving. Revelation 21. The fearful and the unbelieving. And then it lists all the other wicked things. Shall not have any part. See, because what did the man confess? He says, I feared because I knew that you were a hard Lord, a hard king. He said, if you'd have known I was hard, why didn't you get busy and at least put my money to usury in the bank? Why didn't you at least put it in the bank? Why didn't you do something? We have to continually with the church, and this is God's goodness and mercy. He'll do it again and again and again and again, and he'll stay here. He walked with the children of Israel to get a few through. He walked with the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years because he, he was getting a few through. And he'll walk with you and he will not give up with you. But we can do more, people. We can be hearers of the word and we can take a hold of what he's given us and we can shine bright. But he'll continue to walk with you, the mercy and the goodness of God. He'll continue to try to bring you over and convince you because he wants every single person in this place in heaven. He wants every single person in this place in heaven. But I tell you, these that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. And don't let any man deceive you. They, if your fruit is not the fruit of the Spirit, if your fruit is the fruit of unrighteousness, if you have unrighteousness, if you can go and look, if you can look in Galatians chapter 5 and you can list yourself in one of the 17 works of the flesh, you can go there. You have to look and you have to, you have to stand up to reality and say, the scripture says right here that I will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And it says real clearly, now the works of the flesh are these. Are, the, wor the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. And I'll tell you, lasciviousness, people need to get a hold of that. There's a whole lot in lasciviousness. And, 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 and the women want to just talk about the men and their lascivious thoughts that they put out. How about your lascivious dress, women? We're not to be conformed to this world, but we're to be transformed. We're to be transformed. We're not to look like, act like, or walk like the world. We're to lead the world over into holiness. We're to lead them. Let's take it up into the realms of holies of holies. Stand before the Almighty with what you do. Not self-justify what you do because somebody else does it. It's your relationship that you will stand before God with and not someone else's. I don't care what anybody else's relationship is and what they're allowed to do. I care about what I'm going to have to say to my father when I stand before him and what I'm going to bring before him when I stand before him. And I don't care if anybody else don't like it. I don't care, you know, when I was 25 if somebody called me a, a fuddy-duddy or whatever they called me. I could care less. When I was in school, my name was Preacher. They called me Preacher because somebody in the school stood up for the things of the kingdom. And they would have nothing to do with me unless somebody was in trouble. Because who, what sinner wants to hang around somebody that's going to bring the light of the gospel, huh? You know? So, okay. I don't care. 
It's just a preparation to stand before God and not be moved regardless of what other people do and what they say and what they think. I'm going to live in the realms of his holiness. I'm going to live in the realms of his glory. I'm going to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and I'm not going to have somebody else's relationship. I'm going to have the relationship that God has given me. Now, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And, and I would say, follow Pastor Mark as he follows Christ. But only those that are following Christ. If they're not following Christ, if they're not lining up with what the Word of God says, I would say, don't follow him. Get a hold of Jesus. And regardless, you still need to get a hold of Jesus for yourself. Because there isn't anybody else who's going to stand before God before you. Except your pastor, he will stand before God for you. And he will give an account for whether he brought you over into the things of heaven or if he told you lies or whatever he did, he's going to be responsible and he wants to do it. Pastor Mark, I know he wants to do it with all joy. But right here in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 is where I'm at. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Well, that's the big one. As soon as somebody upsets you, your apple cart is turned over. You know, that thing that would try to come up and just be angry because somebody did something to you. You know, you're going to be tried. You're going to be tried. Are you going to yield? You know, honey and butter to be eaten that he need to learn to choose the good and refuse the evil. See, we live in that. We choose the good and we refuse the evil. And the glorious thing about it is it's not by ourselves. It's through the Spirit. It's through the Spirit, but it's us yielding ourselves, yielding ourselves up continually to the Holy Spirit. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife. Way too much strife goes on in the church, in the household, in the family. We cannot give ourselves to these things. Strife, sedition, heresies. We look at everything else, but we want to we wanna skip over strife. Envy, oh my goodness, how God's people will allow envy to work in them. Murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of these, which I tell you before as I've told you in the pa times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is not my word. This is the word of God. If you are allowing these things in your life, then you need to allow the Holy Spirit to change you. And it's very, very simple. Give yourself over to him. Get caught up in the realms of the Holy Ghost. Give yourself to praying and seeking the Father like you give yourself to other things. If, you know, if a weightlifter doesn't get out there and lift those weights, he's never going to build those muscles. If a runner doesn't get out there and run, he's never going to win the race. Do we realize we're in a race? And a runner is going to run continually. A runner is going to get up. If he's, in, if, he's gonna, if he's training for a race, and especially if he's training for the Olympics, he is going to give himself to running every day and not just a few minutes of running every day and say, oh, you know, that's good enough, I'm going to win. But he is going to give himself realizing that he is going to obtain a prize. I'm going to obtain the prize. Are you going to obtain the prize? Think of how much. There's some runners in this place. How much did you give yourself to running? Are you giving yourself to the things of the Spirit like you gave yourself to running? Are you, you think about what you do and what you've given yourself to. Are you giving yourself to the things of the Spirit? Are you, letting, are you getting along with God in that secret place? And giving yourself to the Spirit where God can speak to you and that glory resides in you. To where you don't allow these things to have any place of you because those old things are passed away. You were sometimes in darkness, but now you are the children of light. You were sometimes in the past before you gave yourself to Jesus and you allowed the Holy Spirit to fill you. You were in that darkness. You do not want that darkness in you. Giving yourself to the Spirit is the manifestation of of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, faith, temperance. Against such things there is no law. The law doesn't hover over where the Spirit is because the Spirit makes the law living in life. Is the law passed away? No. Just the handling of things. But the righteousness of the law, it's fulfilled in us through the Spirit. 
Because what they could not do, Romans chapter 7 makes it clear, what they could not do through their own ability, we can do through the Spirit. Hallelujah. Through the Holy Ghost, we can live out the letter of righteousness because He has performed it in us through His Spirit. If we will allow the Holy Spirit to be ruler and reigner of our life. There is no battle that is too hard. There is nothing that's too big because the Almighty is on the inside of us. There is no victory that cannot be won. Hallelujah. We are victorious through Jesus Christ. Victorious. Now I just pray in Jesus' name that every one of us stand up and we live in this victory through the Holy Spirit and we no longer allow the enemy to come and whack us with any stupid little thing, any any little bit of lasciviousness, any little bit of strife, any little bit of envy, any little bit of speaking evil against someone. But we stand in the light of the glory and we count this light and this glory more precious, more precious, more precious than anything that we have on this earth because he is. He is more precious. He is more precious. And if we could just be aware of his presence that's in this place right now, his glory that is in this place right now, if we could be aware of his glory that's in that secret place that he continually calls you to, we would live there we would not allow this world to run us over. Father, I thank you for a church that's shining bright, that will not be moved, that will hold up righteousness. Father, that will be those, that will be those, Father, that will stand as your ambassadors showing forth your representa- representation, that we will represent you, Father. Do we realize that we represent the Father? What we do we represent the Father. We don't, want to, we don't want to show up sometime and say, oh, yeah, that's the servant of the Almighty God, the creator of all earth. And we have to hang our heads and go, oh, no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. He's not my dad because a father like that wouldn't have a child like me. We don't want to be like that. We want to represent the gospel of Jesus Christ with the glory shining bright on us everywhere we go and everything we do. He's worth it. Heaven's worth it. The glory on this earth is worth it. This present glory that we have, this present glory that we can live in, this glory that was on the day of Pentecost living today, today, are you living in that glory of the Pentecost (laughs) <laughs> that was poured out on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. This is what we're called to live in. That day was not a day 2,000 years ago that happened one time. This, this is what we live in. This is victory, power, authority, and strength, dominion over all the elements of the world, much more the sin and the darkness. But we have authority over every power of darkness. We have authority over everything God created. We have dominion. If a dog was to come running up here and try to attack us growling and barking, we can say in the name of Jesus, you turn around and go, I have authority over you. We have authority. If we were need to walk on the water to get to the other side for some reason that we were doing something about the Father's business, then the elements of the water would have to hold our feet up just like it held Jesus' feet up. Because Jesus went into the mountain. He went into the place to pray, to cry out to the Father, to be in that place of that relationship and that fellowship with him while he sent the disciples on, on along. He had to go into that secret place. And how much more do we? How much more do we? And nobody else can go in that secret place with us. There's a secret place that nobody else can go. And then we come together and we pray together and we have prayer partners and we we come together as a church and we pray together. But no one can go into that secret place, that secret relationship with us. And how much more do we? And so Jesus was catching up with them. And he could have been translated, but he chose to walk across the water. The elements have to hold us up as we step on them as we're about the Father's business. The the wind has to obey us. It It cannot overflow the boat where Jesus is getting ready to do something and Jesus is in us and if we're in the boat then the water can't overflow and the sea sea has to be still the wind has to be still 
Will we stand up and take this authority that God's given us? Will we live out this life? Will we be the ambassadors of Jesus Christ? Will we be his representations and shine bright with his glory? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your glory that's in this place. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you, Father, that you are pleading with us, Lord Jesus, to allow you to reign and rule over us, to allow your Holy Spirit to fill us and baptize us and overwhelm us. We thank you, Father God, for all the people that are saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, in this place. I'm not going to get distracted by the things of this life. I'm not going to get distracted by the things of this world. Lord, no matter what it looks like, no matter how hard it may be to humble myself, Lord, I will lay down upon my face, and if that's what it takes, and I will humble myself before you, Father God. I will lay down my life, and I will walk out the life of Jesus Christ, because you said, as he is, so are we in this world. Are you as he is? Are you as he is in this world? He said, as he is, so are we in this world. Do we live his life? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your glory. Thank you, Father, for your glory. Thank you, Father, for your glory in this place. Father, we just thank you for every yoke broken. We thank you, Father, for every yoke broken off of any person in this place right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for your anointing that breaks the yoke. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Everybody can just stand with me. And if there's anybody that wants prayer for any reason in this place, I want you to come right now. Father will strengthen you as you surrender yourself to him and say, it's not my way, it's not my will, Father, but here I am. Take all of me. I'm going to pour out my life this morning before you, Father. I pour out my life before you, Lord Jesus. Here I am. Father, baptize me afresh in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, I want to to live out everything that you've called me to, to be and everything that you've called me to do. Lord Jesus, I don't want to stay like I was five years ago. I don't want to stay where I was five years ago. I don't want to be where I was five years ago. But, Father, I want to live, Lord Jesus, in the realms of your glory. Father, I want to grow up in the things that you are pleading with us to grow up in. I want to grow up and be everything that you've called us to be, Father. I want the change. Father, you see every person that has come in this place. And you see every person, Lord Jesus, that is up here. And I just thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the fire. Everybody over here in this section, just make room. Just scoot on in here. We don't want anybody left in the aisle. Just scoot on in. Everybody just scoot on over a little bit and scoot in. Come on up. Father, I don't want to stay the same. Lord, the realms of your glory, the realms of your presence, the realms of your anointing. Father God, we just thank you. Father, we just ask you, Father, to baptize every person in this place with the fire of the Holy Ghost, with the fresh fire. The fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. The fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. Right here, right now, the fresh fire. Just reach out and touch him. He is in this place. He is pleading with us. He's pleading with every one of us to come up higher, come up higher into the realms of his glory, into the realms of his presence. Let him touch you right now. Go on over. Let's see. Broshete, the realms of the glory of heaven. We're going to see the realms of the glory of heaven touch every person. We're going to see the change. We're seeing people, Father, that have been functioning in the realms, that have functioned in the realms of your glory in the past, Father. They're coming over into a new dimension. A new dimension in you, Father, a a greater faithfulness. Father, fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. Fresh fire of the Holy Ghost that doesn't leave us the same, that brings the change. The fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. The fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. The fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. You touch heaven. You touch heaven right now. It's not about somebody laying their hands on you because it's about you and the Father. Right now, you're in, in the collective group with unity, but you're raptured over in the place. You let yourself be raptured over in the place of the realms of his glory. Right now. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. And they were in, all, in one place, in one accord. One place, in one accord. The unity. The unity of everybody going... Father, baptize us with your Holy Ghost, a fresh, a fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. And the second recorded in, in Acts when they prayed, 
the place was shaken. There was an earthquake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father, for the change. I thank you, Father, for the realms of glory. I thank you, Father, as your people surrender. They are trading what they've had for glory. Glory. 